the Zoll AED-3, the AED that leads the way. All Zoll AEDs are equipped with real CPR help technology that empowers rescuers with the tools necessary to provide high-quality CPR. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the latest addition to Zoll's AED family, the Zoll AED-3. We're now going to turn on the Zoll AED-3 to demonstrate some of the advanced features as well as show you the power of real CPR help. Unit OK. Stay calm. Check responsiveness. Call for help. If patient is a child, press child button. Quickly change to a child rescue if needed. Remove pad package. Cut or tear clothing to expose patient's bare chest. The pad package includes a large scissor for cutting away clothing. Cut or tear clothing to expose patient's bare chest. It also includes a patient prep kit with razor, wipes, and other items. Open pad package. Attach pads to patient's bare chest. Matching screen and pad graphics show proper pad placement for adults or children. Attach pads to patient's bare chest. If patient is a child, press child button. The color screen graphics and CPR landmark on the Don't pads provide guidance on proper hand placement. The Zoll AED-3 can see if CPR has begun and will continue to prompt the rescuer to start CPR. No shock advised. Start CPR. Push to match the tone. The bar gauge shows each compression in real time, so that if needed, a correction can be made on the very next compression. If compressions are too shallow, a voice and text prompt will indicate that you need to push harder. Push harder. If my compressions are at the correct depth, as indicated by the bolded bars between the two markers, the Zoll AED-3 will give me an encouraging Good compressions. It's common for rescuers to tire as they do compressions. If they do, they'll again be prompted to push harder. Push harder. Push harder. If you stop compressions, the Zoll AED-3 can see this and will prompt you to continue CPR. Continue CPR. A life-threatening allergic reaction, anaphylaxis, is unpredictable. It could be mild one minute, then suddenly... It's scary. Like, you can't even breathe scary. Or your skin gets all itchy and breaks out into hive scary. Or your throat starts to tickle and close scary. It's different for everybody. Every reaction is different. A mild reaction one time can be life-threatening the next. So it's important to know your body and know when it starts to feel funny. It could be the warning signs of anaphylaxis. So it's also important to know how to use one of these. An EpiPen auto injector. The EpiPen and EpiPen Junior are for the emergency treatment of life threatening allergic reactions. And for people who are at an increased risk for these reactions. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior should only be used to help someone during an emergency. Ready to show them how it's done? Yeah! EpiPen Junior, the one with the green label, is for kids. Like me. An EpiPen with the yellow label? For bigger people. Like me. So, first things first, you take it out of the tube. Just flip open the yellow cap. Or the green cap. Slide it out and hold it like this. Blue to the sky. Orange to the thigh. Then you take off the blue cap. Blue safety release.
Never put your hands near the orange tip because that's where the needle comes out. The needle is designed to go through clothing, including jeans, because it must be injected into the outer thigh for quick absorption. If you're helping a young child, like me, hold the leg firmly in place. Once it is, you just do this. Boom. It clicks, so you know it worked. Then you hold it there for three seconds. Then, remove EpiPen. You'll still see some liquid in there, but don't worry, your EpiPen Junior Auto Injector gave you the right dose, and it has a special feature, the never see needle. Yeah, so the needle's totally covered up. So you should never see the needle. Then rub the spot for 10 seconds while you or someone else gets emergency medical help right away. Call us an ambulance. <laughs> or have someone take you to the emergency room. Just make sure to do it immediately. And you should always carry two EpiPen auto injectors wherever you go. They even come clipped together because some people might need the second dose. Remember, epinephrine is the only first-line treatment for anaphylaxis, not antihistamines. So just trust yourself and do it. Don't hesitate, especially if you know the symptoms of a life-threatening allergic reaction. And I've practiced with the gray trainer that comes in the box. Because this is what's important to people like me. And me. Use EpiPen Epinephrine Injection USP 0.3 milligrams or EpiPen Junior Epinephrine Injection USP 0.15 milligrams auto injectors right away when you have an allergic emergency, anaphylaxis. Get emergency medical help right away. You may need further medical attention. Only a healthcare professional should give additional doses of epinephrine if you need more than two injections for a single anaphylactic episode. EpiPen or EpiPen Junior should only be injected into the middle of your outer thigh, upper leg, through clothing if necessary. Do not inject into your veins, buttocks, fingers, toes, hands, or feet. Hold the leg of young children firmly in place before and during injection to prevent injuries. In case of accidental injection, please seek immediate medical treatment. Rarely, patients who have used EpiPen or EpiPen Junior may develop an infection at the injection site within a few days. Some of these infections can be serious. Call your healthcare professional right away if you have any of the following at an injection site. Redness that does not go away, swelling, tenderness, or the area feels warm to the touch. Tell your healthcare professional about all of your medical conditions, especially if you have asthma, a history of depression, thyroid problems, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, high blood pressure or heart problems, have any other medical conditions, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, or are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed. Be sure to also tell your healthcare professional all the medicines you take, especially medicines for asthma. If you have certain medical conditions or take certain medicines, your condition may get worse or you may have longer lasting side effects when you use EpiPen or EpiPen Junior. Common side effects include fast, irregular, or pounding heartbeat, sweating, nausea or vomiting, breathing problems, paleness, dizziness, weakness, shakiness, headache, feelings of overexcitement, nervousness, or anxiety. These side effects usually go away quickly if you lie down and rest. Tell your healthcare professional if you have any side effect that bothers you or that does not go away. Visit EpiPen.com for full prescribing information and patient information. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior Auto Injectors are for the emergency treatment of life-threatening allergic reactions, anaphylaxis, caused by allergens, exercise, or unknown triggers, and for people who are at increased risk for these reactions. EpiPen and EpiPen Junior are intended for immediate administration as emergency supportive therapy only. Seek immediate emergency medical help right away. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. For additional information, please contact us at 800-395-3376. Talk to your healthcare professional to see if EpiPen or EpiPen Junior auto injectors are right for you. If you know someone who takes prescription opioids like Percocet or Oxycontin, or illegal opioids like heroin, then you should know about the risk of an accidental, life-threatening opioid overdose. In fact, over 56% of overdoses happen in private homes beyond the immediate reach of doctors and nurses. There's a way for you to help someone who is experiencing an opioid overdose, even if you don't have specialized medical training. In this video are instructions for use, as well as the uses and safety information you should know for using Narcan. 
But first, it's important to be able to recognize the signs of an overdose. Signs of an opioid overdose include not waking up or responding to your voice or touch, breathing that is very slow, irregular, or has even stopped. The dark center part of the eyes becomes very small, sometimes called pinpoint pupils. Fingernails and lips turn blue or purple, a slow heartbeat, weak pulse, or low blood pressure. If someone has these signs, here's how you can help. Narcan nasal spray is a medicine that reverses the effects of an opioid overdose. Narcan nasal spray is not a substitute for emergency medical care. Repeated doses may be necessary. As with any drug, you need to be aware of important safety information about its use. Please pay particular attention to the indications and important safety information at the end of this video. Also, please see the accompanying full prescribing information in the use of this product. Narcan nasal spray was designed for use wherever an emergency opioid overdose happens. Because it doesn't require specialized medical training, it can be given to someone by following these instructions. First, lay the person on their back. Then, remove the device from the box and peel back the package. Hold the device with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and two fingers on either side of the nozzle. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under their neck with your hand. Place and hold the tip of the nozzle in one nostril until your fingers touch the bottom of their nose. Press the plunger firmly to give the dose into the person's nose. After giving the dose, remove the device from the person's nostril and move them on their side, positioning their hands under their head. Call 911 and get emergency medical help right away after giving the first dose of Narcan nasal spray, even if the person wakes up. Narcan is not a substitute for emergency medical care. Keep the person under observation. If the person doesn't respond by waking up to voice or touch or breathing normally after two to three minutes, administer the second dose provided in the box in the alternate nostril. If they respond and the signs of an opioid emergency have returned after Narcan nasal spray is given, then give another dose in the alternate nostril using a new device and watch them closely until emergency help is received. Additional doses may be given every two to three minutes until they respond or emergency medical help is received. After using Narcan nasal spray, put the device in its box and then dispose in a place safe from children. Narcan nasal spray delivers a consistent, concentrated 4 mg dose of naloxone that can reverse the effects of a life-threatening opioid overdose in minutes. Visit Narcan.com to learn more. There's a way for you to help someone who is experiencing an opioid overdose, even if you don't have specialized medical training. Indications and important safety information. What is Narcan nasal spray? Narcan nasal spray is a prescription medicine used for the treatment of an opioid emergency, such as an overdose or a possible opioid overdose with signs of breathing problems and severe sleepiness or not being able to respond. Narcan nasal spray is to be given right away and does not take the place of emergency medical care. Get emergency medical help right away after giving the first dose of Narcan nasal spray, even if the person wakes up. Narcan nasal spray is safe and effective in children for known or suspected opioid overdose. What is the most important information I should know about Narcan nasal spray? Narcan nasal spray is used to temporarily reverse the effects of opioid medicines. The medicine in Narcan nasal spray has no effect in people who are not taking opioid medicines. Always carry Narcan nasal spray with you in case of an opioid emergency. Use Narcan nasal spray right away if you or your caregiver think signs or symptoms of an opioid emergency are present, even if you are not sure because an opioid emergency can cause severe injury or death. Signs and symptoms of an opioid emergency may include unusual sleepiness and you are not able to awaken the person with a loud voice or by rubbing firmly on the middle of their chest, breathing problems including slow or shallow breathing and someone difficult to awaken or who looks like they are not breathing. The black circle in the center of the colored part of the eye is very small, sometimes called pinpoint pupils and someone difficult to awaken. Family members, caregivers, or other people who may have to use Narcan nasal spray in an opioid emergency should know where Narcan nasal spray is stored and how to give Narcan nasal spray before an opioid emergency happens. Get emergency medical help right away after giving the first dose of Narcan nasal spray. Rescue breathing, or CPR, may be given while waiting for emergency medical help. The signs and symptoms of an opioid emergency can return after Narcan nasal spray is given. If this happens, give another dose after two to three minutes using a new Narcan nasal spray and watch the person until emergency help is received. Who should not use Narcan nasal spray? 
Do not use Narcan nasal spray if you are allergic to naloxone hydrochloride or any of the ingredients in Narcan nasal spray. What should I tell my healthcare provider before using Narcan nasal spray? Before using Narcan nasal spray, tell your healthcare provider about all of your medical conditions, including if you have heart problems, are pregnant or plan to become pregnant, use of Narcan nasal spray may cause withdrawal symptoms in your unborn baby. Your unborn baby should be examined by a healthcare provider right away after you use Narcan nasal spray. Are breastfeeding or plan to breastfeed? It is not known if Narcan nasal spray passes into your breast milk. Tell your healthcare provider about the medicines you take, including prescription and over-the-counter medicines, vitamins, and herbal supplements. What are the possible side effects of Narcan nasal spray? Narcan nasal spray may cause serious side effects, including sudden opioid withdrawal symptoms. In someone who has been using opioids regularly, opioid withdrawal symptoms can happen suddenly after receiving Narcan nasal spray and may include body aches, diarrhea, increased heart rate, fever, runny nose, sneezing, goosebumps, sweating, nausea or vomiting, nervousness, restlessness or irritability, shivering or trembling, stomach cramping, weakness, increased blood pressure. In infants under four weeks old who have been receiving opioids regularly, sudden opioid withdrawal may be life-threatening if not treated the right way. Signs and symptoms include seizures, crying more than usual, and increased reflexes. These are not all of the possible side effects of Narcan nasal spray. Call your doctor for medical advice about side effects. The risk information provided here is not comprehensive. To learn more, talk about Narcan nasal spray with your healthcare provider or pharmacist. The FDA approved product labeling can be found at www.narcan.com slash PDF slash Narcan dash prescribing dash information dot PDF or 1844 for N-A-R-C-A-N. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov slash medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088. Please see full prescribing information, including the patient information for Narcan nasal spray. school staff need some basic knowledge about diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic disease that affects adults and children. It cannot be cured, but it can be managed. Diabetes management is 24-7. You have to time and balance your meals, exercise, insulin, or other diabetes medications, and monitor blood glucose levels. Generally, food, stress, Illness or injury can cause blood glucose levels to go up. Insulin and other diabetes medications and physical activity make blood glucose levels go down. Glucose, also known as sugar, gives us energy. Glucose comes from food, especially carbohydrates. It's carried from the blood into cells in the body by a hormone called insulin. People with type 1 diabetes don't make insulin while people with type 2 diabetes don't make enough insulin and or the insulin does not work properly. With type 1 diabetes, which used to be called juvenile diabetes, the immune system is involved. For some reason, the body destroys cells in the pancreas that make insulin. This type of diabetes is called type 1 diabetes, and it is when there is no insulin being produced by the pancreas. It's the most common type in children and adolescents. The treatment for type 1 diabetes is maintaining blood glucose levels with a balance of food, physical activity, and insulin. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, or the insulin being produced isn't helping glucose enter the cells. Type 2 used to be referred to as adult onset diabetes, but is increasingly being seen in younger people. Inactivity and being overweight are risk factors for type 2 diabetes. So exercise and good nutrition are important to prevent and treat type 2 diabetes in youth. Sometimes oral medications, insulin, or other injectable medications are also required. But whether it's type 1 or type 2 diabetes, the problem is the same. The body's own insulin isn't doing what it needs to do to move glucose from the blood to the cells, 
where it can be used as energy. Not enough insulin means there's too much glucose in the blood because it isn't getting from the blood into the cells in the body. This is known as hyperglycemia or high blood glucose. Too much insulin can cause the opposite problem, hypoglycemia or low blood glucose. Diabetes management is all about keeping blood glucose levels in a safe range. Not too high, but not too low either. This means having access to the necessary tools, like a blood glucose meter, insulin, food, glucagon, and sometimes other diabetes medications, and the school nurse and school diabetes team, which can include teachers, the principal, school secretary, cafeteria workers, and others in order to maintain the proper balance. For the student's diabetes needs, a plan should be documented in the student's diabetes medical management plan, which includes physician's orders for the student in the school setting and other written care plans, and distributed to the school diabetes team. Diabetes can be serious in the short term if blood glucose levels become too low. Over the long term, high blood glucose levels can lead to complications, like heart disease, stroke, blindness, amputation, and kidney failure. This is why good care is important. While diabetes is serious and does require 24-7 care, there's no need to be frightened or intimidated. The needs of the student can be safely and easily met when the school diabetes team has been properly trained and works together. Because people with diabetes don't have enough insulin, their bodies can't move glucose from the blood into the other cells. The glucose builds up in the bloodstream. High blood glucose above target range is called hyperglycemia. To help you remember, think hyper, think high. Any number of things can cause hyperglycemia. It's possible that the student has forgotten to take insulin or hasn't taken enough. The student may have eaten more than planned. Food raises blood glucose levels. Stress, inactivity, or illness can also cause hyperglycemia. Among the signs are thirst, tiredness, dry skin, and stomach pains. Also fatigue, the inability to concentrate, and frequent urination are signs of hyperglycemia. Whatever the cause, you need to know how to recognize hyperglycemia. This is important. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on just While hyperglycemia yeah. should be avoided and treated in all okay? students according to yeah. the diabetes yeah. medical management yeah. plan, which may sugar? include giving insulin, yeah. it is important to know that the onset of hyperglycemia comes on more quickly in students who experience insulin pump malfunctions. You're not expected to be a doctor, but when you have a student with diabetes and you notice that something's wrong, you've got to take action. The greatest immediate danger to students with diabetes is hypoglycemia. That's low blood glucose. Remember how it sounds, hypo, low. The other thing you need to remember is that many times, hypoglycemia cannot always be prevented. Be alert for a range of possible signs that something's wrong. Different students can have different symptoms. They may be lethargic or irritable. They may feel weak or unable to think straight. They may be combative, and they may start sweating. Hypoglycemia can come on suddenly without warning. Students Bailey, can get tired okay? or start yeah, feeling fine. ill for any number of reasons. Test your blood sugar. No, I'm fine. Are you sure? If they're yes, doing I'm sports, fine. they can sweat. But if they've got diabetes, Let's you need to watch for any oh. change in behavior Please? or appearance. Right. Hypoglycemia can be unpredictable. The student's condition can deteriorate very quickly. If not treated promptly, they may have a seizure, trouble swallowing, or they may faint. Be familiar with the student's low symptoms and treatment as contained in the diabetes medical management plan, and know where to find the student's low blood glucose supplies. Fruit juice, glucose tabs, or regular soda 
can deliver 15 grams of fast-acting carbohydrate. Your job is to intervene and treat before the student's condition worsens. And remember, a student experiencing hypoglycemia should never be left alone. But that guy told me to pick hypoglycemia can come on at any time, not just during God. sports. Sometimes the signs are not going to jump out at you. But again, if you've got a student with diabetes, Keep an eye out for the red flags. Watch to see if she's sweating or feeling weak when she shouldn't be, if she loses interest or looks pale or sleepy. Clammy skin can be another sign. But the main thing to look for is the change in behavior. A minute ago, the student was focused and looked fine. Very suddenly, though, she's lost interest, and she looks just out of it. You have your meter in your purse? It's in my locker, but I'll be OK. Stay right there. I'm going to get you some juice. Hypoglycemia can sometimes affect the way people think. So don't expect the student to know what's happening or even be cooperative. If you don't have a blood glucose meter, treat for hypoglycemia anyway. After a hypoglycemic event, kids need time to rest and recover. Blood glucose monitoring is the cornerstone of diabetes care. Students should check their blood glucose before meals and snacks, and when they experience symptoms of either low or high blood glucose. However, not all students check before snacks. Blood glucose target range is individualized for each student and set out in the student's diabetes medical management plan. Many students can monitor their own blood glucose. Monitoring means using a lancet device to prick the skin at the fingertip, forearm, or other site to obtain a drop of blood. The drop goes onto a strip that is inserted into a meter. The meter shows the blood glucose level. Some students may need a nurse or other trained staff to do the checking or help the student check. Blood glucose monitoring is perfectly safe. Test strips can be disposed of in the trash and the school nurse should work with the family to plan the best strategy to dispose of the sharps. Some students may wear a continuous glucose monitor, referred to as CGMS. It continuously monitors blood glucose levels through fluid in the tissues. CGMS can be useful in detecting the onset of hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia and monitors blood glucose patterns and trends. However, CGMS is not a substitute for finger stick checks. Blood glucose levels should always be confirmed with a finger stick check before any treatment or action is taken. Students need to be able to check their blood glucose anytime, anywhere, and to have equipment always available. It helps them to treat promptly, avoid the complications of diabetes, avoid unnecessary missed classroom time, and helps them become more independent. Severe hypoglycemia, low blood glucose, can be very serious. Hypoglycemia takes place when insulin and blood glucose are out of balance, and this can be caused by a number of factors. Too much insulin, not eating enough food, too much exercise, or eating late. The student may lose consciousness. She may have seizures. She may be unable to swallow. If that happens, Never try to give the Chelsea. student food or drink Chelsea? or put anything in the mouth. Jaren, go get some help. A student experiencing hypoglycemia should never be left alone. Call 911. Someone Chelsea. else needs to call for help and call 911. I have an emergency at my school. My friend has diabetes and she just passed out. For cases of severe hypoglycemia, the school nurse or other trained staff need to know how to administer glucagon. Glucagon acts directly on the liver to release stored glucose. The glucagon kit needs to be where school staff can get to it. Position the student on her side and administer glucagon. The student should wake up in 10 to 20 minutes. 
she should drink fruit juice and a snack in accordance with the diabetes medical management plan. Check blood sugar levels every 10 to 15 minutes until emergency personnel arrive and until the student's back to her target range, according to her diabetes medical management plan. Keep checking until emergency personnel arrive. Keep a close eye on the student. She may not even remember what happened. She may experience nausea, vomiting, or headache. That's okay. This is normal. Glucagon is a life-saving treatment that cannot harm the student.